is a growing history that continues to make the sport of racing great. And where it grows from starts with understanding where it began. Seeing and hearing the stories that bring us back day after day. Hey, we're going to talk a little bit more about aerodynamics now. Uh, everybody knows about air. And aerodynamics is simply the study of moving air over solid objects, and that pertains to race cars. Uh, now, when this car is moving, let's say, 150 miles per hour through the air, uh, we have to recognize that some parts of the car are going to get what they have drag, they call drag. And drag is going to slow the car down. And the smoother we make the airflow over the car, the less drag it has, and also the less lift it has. And what that means is, if this is a 3,000 pound car, we're going to have the car probably weigh about 4,000 pounds when it moves through the air, and that's going to squat the car down to the surface of the racetrack. And they'll get a lot better traction They'll go much faster through the corners, but because of a little drag that we can't get rid of, we're going to be actually slower on the straightaways. So certain tracks with long straightaways, we don't want a lot of aerodynamics working because it'll slow us down too much if most of the track is on a straightaway. But the corners, when you have a, a, a round type of track or a trioval, there's so much cornering, we want a lot of downforce. And that's why the NASCAR team spent so much time developing different air packages for different tracks. The wind tunnel to do all their testing to try to get the car as fast as possible moving through the air. Uh, now, in the year 2020, the wind tunnel isn't used nearly as much because of computer simulations, and uh, they do all this work on computers. drag is going to slow the car down, and the smoother we make the airflow over the car, the less drag it has, and also the less lift it has. And what that means is, if this is a 3,000 pound car, we're going to have the car probably weigh about 4,000 pounds when it moves through the air, and that's going to squat the car down to the surface of the racetrack and they'll get a lot better traction. They'll go much faster through the corners, but because of a little drag that we can't get rid of, we're going to be actually slower on the straightaways. So certain tracks with long straightaways, we don't want a lot of aerodynamics working because it'll slow us down too much if most of the track is on a straightaway. So what we want in the front end of the car is to have the front end low to the ground and that's going to reduce the drag at the front of the car. And with a slanted windshield, we reduce the drag even more. Now the secret is to have all that air directed to the rear spoiler, the air dam in back. That's going to put much additional pressure on the car. On the back tires, it'll squat the car down, and the tires will be stuck to the asphalt. been talking about aerodynamics and the one thing we haven't spoken about yet was drafting and drafting is something you see at Daytona and Talladega a lot 30 car drafts and more and we'll just hit on the big points of what drafting is and why people do it why the race car drivers do this and that of course starts with aerodynamics uh, 
we've got air that flows smoothly over the car, and then we have turbulence that causes drag. Drag slows the cars down. The front end is a primary source of drag on a car. Slicing through the air, the air will actually slow down the vehicle because of all the drag created by the front of the car. And also there will be turbulence at the back of the car as the air comes around and the sun settles and the cars will actually start rocking just from the airflow at 200 miles per hour. So when people draft, they will be uh, just a, maybe a car length or two behind the car in front of them. And they will pick up a draft much like your car may pick up the draft of an 18-wheeler on the highway. You'll feel it kind of pull you along, and then if you get a little bit too far back, the air will be turbulent, and your car will actually rock. Race cars experience that same thing, exactly. So when one race car is drafting another, the big thing is the second car in line won't have all that air hitting the front of the car. That makes the second car in line faster. The air will flow from the first car right over the second car. So the first car will actually be at full speed, but the other cars will be about three-quarter throttle. And when that person decides to go out into the air, they will actually get a boost. They can hit the gas all the way to the floor and pass that leader. But when he's alone in the air, that air will eventually slow him down. And that's why the drivers have to time their moves. They have to make sure they can pass that first car successfully and then move in front of the car uh, to make the pass. So during the race, people really don't want to leave the draft because they're actually going a little bit slower than the, than the other cars are capable of. The rest of the cars from second through 30th, we'll say, will be at about three-quarter throttle. The leader will be full throttle, which means the leader is using a lot of gas. The downside of being in a draft, the second car through the 30th car will be overheating the engine because instead of the air going into the front causing that drag, the air is going to be going over the car, which means the air doesn't go through the radiator and it doesn't cool the engine down. So very quickly, that's just a, a short lesson on aerodynamics and specifically drafting and why the NASCAR drivers do it. Better gas mileage, they run laps, and they don't really want to leave. They take turns leading, and in a draft you'll see people kind of move their front ends out, out of line, and then they'll go back in line to cool the engine. They need the air to cool the engine. So there's a lot to it. This is very simple explanation, but it's a fascinating thing to study. Well, thank you very much. Visit the Dynamic North Carolina Auto Racing Hall of Fame to see this and other cars that have helped mark history in person. Preserving Racing History.